Everybody, Merry Christmas! Why are you in pajamas? I, th I thought we we're doing like a, a Christmas morning thing where you you wake up and you run out to the tree and you open presents. No. Ho ho. Well, Rich, uh, it looks like Santa left us some presents, and since you're the festive one, why don't you open up a gift and see what he gave us? Okay. Okay. To you idiots. Oh. From Satan. Oh. Santa. Oh. Santa. Okay. Oh. It, oh. It's elves. They're not working for Santa anymore. Okay, so demon elves. Demon elves on demon Christmas? Demon elves on Christmas. Okay. All right. H a holiday horror. I'm sure it is. We now convene the Sisters of Anti-Christmas. <laughs> I want to join that organization. They look so anti-Christmas. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, they look they look great. The, the elves? Yeah, the, these little puppet monsters are <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the town, bloodthirsty elves are about to get down. Okay. Oh. <laughs> We're not off to a good start. <laughs> no. Uh, an innocent romp in the woods turns into a hellish nightmare when three young girls accidentally awaken an army of evil elves, in quotes. Genetically created by a neo-Nazi mad scientist during World War II, and we have a winner. So we have Nazi elves on Christmas. <laughs> Nazi All elves right. on Christmas. <laughs> These hideous creatures don't work for Santa. They have a special mission. To mate with a virgin and take over the world as a pint-sized master race. <laughs> Everything going for it yeah, so far. Yeah. Noise. I'm not a detective anymore. <laughs> this is here, henceforth called Everything the Movie. <laughs> Dan Dan Haggerty, Grizzly Adams, stars as Mike McGavin a department store Santa who must expose the unholy force and stop the gruesome terror before the elves destroy Christmas. Aww. Okay, when I first opened this box, I'm like, oh. But after I read the back of it, I'm like, oh! <laughs> so this this started to look a lot better. First you send and then you die. In my case, they piss on you. <laughs> <laughs> Here lies the last Santa. <laughs> So we got Christmas horror movie, we got uh, demon elves, we got grizzly Adams. Small Santas and Nazis. Too. Yes, yes, this sounds like a winner. <laughs> life is long and life is hard, but Kevin's is thick and Dave's is a yard. <laughs> what? Shut up. <laughs> Whatever. Did someone say dicks? <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, oh. oh. Thank you. Oh God. Oh no. I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. Ah. 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 
Oh, okay. There you go. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Ah, ah, ah. Pervert. I'm not a pervert. I like seeing naked girls. I'm your fucking sister. Yeah, and you've got fucking big tits, and I'm going to tell everybody I saw them. <laughs> Holy <laughs> moly. <laughs> now here's the line we want your son to say, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't elves great? Nothing puts me in the holiday spirit like incest, rape, and Nazis. Right, Mike? Uh, why don't we pick another film that Santa has left under the tree for us? Great, great. How about... Oh, here's what... Two best of the worst from Santa. Why don't you open that up, Mike? All right. Well, thank you, Santa. I can't wait to see. This is the first time we've opened a present, and I can't wait to see what it is. Yeah. yeah. I hope Santa didn't leave us another shitty movie under the tree. I have a feeling he might have, though. What is it? Oh, my God. It's a DVD with three movies on it. What do we do? Uh, I think we just watched the first one on it. Santa Claus. Here are gathered boys and girls of different races and creeds. They have come from many lands to help Santa bring joy and happiness to all of the Earth's children. These little helpers are from Africa. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> Yay! What? That's what children from Africa look like, all of them. Yep, all of them. <laughs> Yes, children, they work for me. <laughs> this is where all the missing children end up. <laughs> but let's take a look. Oh, and this one has the shortest synopsis. Excellent. Santa Claus, Pitch, the mean-spirited devil, is trying to ruin Christmas. Santa Claus teams up with Merlin the Magician and the children of the world. Oh my God, that's a pretty big team up. To, in order to save the day. Luce aeroplan planetus satellite. Brava Tamara. I can't understand you. <laughs> Do you work for me? <laughs> no. Santa for Christmas, I want to go home. <laughs> oh my God, it's 94 minutes long. Great. Let's go! Oh, he's not there. <laughs> no, is, is he going to the bathroom? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Santa's fluffing himself before he hits Earth. Yeah. Hey, Rich. Yeah. That's, you you want to watch more Christmas movies? No, I don't want to watch any more Christmas movies. We could, have some, we could have some Christmas movie fun. No, no, please no. Okay. No, no, no. Christmas! Here it is, Rich. The final Christmas movie of the night. Oh, Christmas time full of wonder and cheer. Oh, okay, okay. Christmas vacation too. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a movie. Oh, Jesus. When Cousin Eddie joined Clark Griswold and his family for National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, the movie quickly became a holiday institution. An institution, of course, is where many think Cousin Eddie should reside. <laughs> Randy Quaid again plays crude but lovable Eddie, and Miriam Flynn returns as his wife in another comic skid on the vacation banana peel. In a way, Christmas has always been a test of survival for Eddie and his crude, and that's truer than ever when they receive an expenses paid holiday tour of the South Pacific and end up shipwrecked on a remote island. Fred Willard, Ed Asner, Joy for vacation fans. <laughs> Fuck. Here you go, Rich. Let's watch Christmas Vacation 2. Rich, Rich, calm down. 
Guys, we watched some terrible holiday movies today. It's the yes. worst possible. Um, one in particular may have been the worst movie I have ever seen in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everyone at this table would agree. <laughs> no, it's not the worst in my whole life. It's bad though. Things. Things. How could you ever say that after seeing Things? Things is pretty terrible. You know, you know Things has redeeming qualities. This movie had no redeeming qualities. Things is more entertaining. This is just loathsome. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's start with Elves. The, the little movie that could. A very promising start to the night. Very promising. Yes, Rich, tell us what Elves is all about. Because uh, it had the most amusing premise. Elves is about everything. It's about a, a coven of anti-Christmas witches who accidentally spill blood on the troll who the Nazis made that was buried in the forest. And then the homeless, drunken, mall Santa ex-detective has to figure out what's going on so he can put everything right. <laughs> oh, it's a, that's pretty accurate synopsis. So. That sounds crazy. <laughs> but it happened. It all happened. You and your damn elves, I'm sick of it. <laughs> How many times have I heard that? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get a little more into detail uh, than just the basic synopsis. Uh, the film is called Elves. It should be called Elf. Uh, even though the back of the box does feature two of them, there is only one in the film, as far as I remember, right? Yes. yes. And it's only its head and feet. What? Well, it's got like it gloves. It has it has a head and shoulders. Yeah. It has at least one hand. I don't remember if I saw if we ever There's saw two. two. It was digging underground. Okay. okay. Oh yeah. And it has feet and shins. But no midsection. Yeah. No midsection. Yeah. No That's, torso. They, they ran out of money when they had to make the midsection. And the face has absolutely no articulation. He's he's got this dumb open mouth look frozen on his face. Yeah. It's essentially a, a rubber mask with. A body, sort of, and it's clearly puppeteered. It's not an animatronic thing. It's not a guy in a costume. It's just a guy with the mask on his on his hand, going like this. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right, but oh, you're giving it too much because its neck can't even swivel. No, it's some guy like, holding like a torso. It's like the it's, it's, it's like the whole thing moves like, like this. Moves. Yeah. Oh man, and he and and he graduated from the Kermit the Frog School of Acting because like when he has to move really fast, he goes. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing was barely in the film. It, it was, what was this movie about? I think he was in for comedic purposes because whenever he showed up, it was just like, what? And yeah. then he'd take off. Yeah. And then that would be it. Maybe or to feel up a girl. The grandpa in the wheelchair was like an old, like Joseph Mengele type doctor yeah. from Nazi era. And he impregnated a younger Aryan woman, which was the mother. Mm -hmm. So that he can have a daughter who was pure Aryan bred for some reason, so that she could become the host for elves, <laughs> because uh, the Nazi super race, which were half human, half elves, and then they and then came they out of the magical forest. Yeah. So I, I believe the intention of the elf troll was to protect the girl, so he could have sex with her. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, then why does he stab her friend? Th that's where it gets a little fuzzy. You know, he, he attacks the brother because the brother had a fight with the sister. Right. And then... Uh, and he attacks he, the mall Santa. He attacks the mall Santa who molested the sister. He, he stabbed the mall Santa in the balls. <laughs> right in the dick. And then, he, and then he brings back her dead cat, which, which, which the mother which killed hilarious. for absolutely no reason. The mother drowned the cat in the toilet, yeah. and then the troll brings her the dead cat back. a nasty Nazi lady. Yeah. I get, we're saying this movie is very dense. Well, it's not over yet. Well, let's let's introduce Grizzly Adams, Please. okay? Because uh, he's obviously the main player in the movie. Mm -hmm. Grizzly Adams, uh, we meet him as a, an ex-alcoholic 
who wants a job at a department store who, that he used to work at as a security guard, and we find out later that he was a police officer. Detective. A detective, a detective even. Um, uh, very elaborate backstory for someone who is, who is basically a hobo at yeah. this point. <laughs> who was told to vacate from his own trailer. <laughs> and there's no, no payoff or no arc that completes no. itself. No, I think eventually he just dies. He just dies in the house, well, he but was... he hands the crystal to oh, the little boy. That, yeah. You don't even see him die, though. It's like no, he just didn't want like, to be involved with the rest of the movie. Your sister needs this, yeah. and then he goes back down, and you don't see him anymore. Yeah. Why, why was it. he so motivated to investigate this... Uh, this ancient symbol slash murder plot. Because the movie needed a hero. Oh, he's a detective at heart, yeah. Well, he gets the job at the mall. They, they tell him, As okay, the mall Santa. Even yeah. though he has a beard, he wears a fake beard. That's right. <laughs> Relax. So he gets, he gets hired on back at the mall because he's cleaned up his act. Okay. Um, and because mall Santa got his dick stamped off. Exactly. To death. He moves into the mall. He lives he starts... by a body outline. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Which is, That's which is, always been my dream. Which is, is the to outline live on a murder scene. That's the outline of the Santa from before. Yeah, Steve. the previous murder victim, it's who, Steve. who was murdered by a, a very, very promising suspect. Santa said oral. The girl who was molested by him five minutes earlier, and then they, the police just they, well, they fall go. out of the movie. They're just like, oh, I guess you didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a mall Santa. Let's not follow this up. And then well, he finds the symbols. The the, the troll oh, yeah. keeps leaving oh, yeah. the symbols, symbols. Yeah. which, according to Grandpa, was the original Nazi symbol instead of the swastika. Right. Well, he goes to investigate the symbols, and that that leads him to Doctor Scientist. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the best character in the movie. Oh. Oh my God. Hello, I'm Doctor Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Fitzpatrick? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does the time. There's first this doctor scientist who's in the library. Oh yeah. He and he the barrels pipe. through the expository dialogue as fast as he possibly two minutes. Doc, do me a favor. What is the bottom line? Well, I'm telling you, the bottom line is the little creepy things are the little creatures that creep on two legs. Idiomatically, we call them elves. There was Doctor Scientist and Professor Physics. Yeah. Okay. Was our name was our names for them? And <laughs> Professor Physics gave uh -huh. an equally fast expository explanation um, uh, in front of small children. Driven to select the genetically perfect human mate, the proverbial virgin, of course, holy midnight consummation on Christmas Eve. Wait a minute. While he's talking, it just goes right, it cuts to the little girls, and they're just sitting there, and they're just listening. The elves were a genetic engineering experiment. And the Nazis yeah, had rape talking. experiments. And... <laughs> and they're like, really, Daddy? What's a, what's a gas-powered dildo? <laughs> what's a rape experiment? Like, how does that work? Well, I don't think any woman's going to willingly fuck that troll, so obviously this is a rape experiment. <laughs> It's this disgusting little two-foot-tall troll. The Nazis really wanted to crossbreed humanity with those things to create a master race? So they, can... they, they run around in the woods and eat their own shit. Hey, they eat bugs, okay? Not, not their own shit. Do you remember at the end when the troll's about to rape the girl and then he sees the bug and he grabs the bug? Is he going to oh. stop to eat the bug? <laughs> That's hungry. It's got a Sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh. In Germany in the 1940s, there was a rash of dick-stabbing assassins. <laughs> and no one figured it out until today. <laughs> That would strike fear into my heart. <laughs> stay, in, stay, in, stay in line with the Nazi party or we're gonna stab your dick. <laughs> yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. A little elf will <laughs> shove a knife in your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Not just once, but it's over. <laughs> Excuse me ma'am, 
I remember a book from college about mystical symbols and runes. <laughs> oh, oh, it's on the third shelf down there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that book. <laughs> it's pretty wonderful. Jay, where did you find this movie? <laughs> I found it in a pawn shop in South Dakota. This pawn. Twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. Jay found this in a pawn shop in South Dakota. Great find. Full floppy hands. The perfect assassin. <laughs> Oh, so the elf finally finds her in the woods, and then I guess this is the, the copulation moment, right? He when, starts putting on the moves. Yeah, but it's incredibly awkward. It's like, he's like there, and we can't really tell what's happening. I, we think they're having sex, but we're not sure. Well, he was never, he was never in position. He was always next. He was doing to her. something, but we're not sure. Because it was, they only had this much of the puppet. I, I think, and we I saw think his hand little, going up her leg, and then yeah. that was it. The little disgusting troll was just attempting foreplay. Yeah, he, I mean, he, oh, he was trying to I be think like so. he was warming her up. Oh, okay, he was in love with her. It wasn't rape to him. Oh my God, Fitzpatrick, Taft University. <laughs> my inner monologue is outer. <laughs> Um, during during his investigations, yeah, Grizzly right. Adams isn't driving around, and apparently the Nazis put a bomb in his car. But the only reason he found it is because he's a chain smoker, and the <laughs> cigarette lighter wasn't working in the car, so he's banging on the car, and then the bomb falls out. There's this out. little plastic yeah. bomb. Yeah. And and instead of throwing the bomb out the window, he jumps out of the car. <laughs> 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 Why did he jump out? <laughs> the Nazis are trying to. Why did he just throw the bomb? <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a loose thing. Just throw it out the window. Okay. Well, you know, it was a stressful situation. It just he did his first instinct. But the real comedy comes when uh, some guy comes up to him right after the explosion and he starts punching him in the face. And he says the two greatest lines in the movie. What are you, a goddamn Nazi or something? Is that elf yours? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are you? Are you a Nazi? Is that your elf? <laughs> Which is the, the two questions I would ask anyone who tried to help me at an accident scene. Right. Uh, In general, also, yeah. the Grizzly Adams' acting was uh, non-existent? Yeah. Doc, do me a favor. What is the bottom line? Just the flattest delivery. That, like, Give me a break, please. It was as if they had just told him that his mother died before the movie started. Or they just told him he was acting in elves. <laughs> but really, I mean, if you read the script to this. I don't know. It, maybe, it, maybe it reads better. <laughs> I want to know the connection between the elves and the Nazis. You and your damn elves. I'm sick of it. Well, what the hell were these Nazis going to do with these elves? The man in the study is your grandfather. And your father! <laughs> Grizzly Adams, you don't know how to read. <laughs> Well, that was the longest trail off <laughs> in the Rich Evans laugh I've ever heard. <laughs>16 quotation marks around it, <laughs> as it should, um, includes the, the classic hits Joe Santa Claus and Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, which is awful, but uh, Jack, we decided to watch Santa Claus, which it, I think should be called Santa Claus versus the Devil. I, I believe on, I found a link on YouTube where it's called Santa Claus versus Satan. Yeah, which is an appropriate title. Um, uh, what is the premise of Santa Claus? I'm calling this great holiday classic. Santa Claus has to fight one of the devil's minions 
for the control of good girls and boys. Why are you doing this? It's just funny. <laughs> it's not classic. <coughs> no, it's not. Um, so Santa Claus uh, learns that the devil is sending one of his minions yeah. to Earth to try to corrupt the little boys and girls. Yeah. And so Santa has to do nothing and hope that the little boys and girls do good on their own. Well, well when it starts off, though, it starts off slow. I mean, we, we, it starts off where we learn that Santa has enslaved a, a large group of children from all portions of the world. Uh, indentured servitude. And, and forces them to sing while he plays on the piano. But we should also note that he lives in a castle in the clouds instead of Earth. The yes. North Pole, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He lives he, in outer space. He lives well, in space. You know, He's okay. space Santa. This seems to be a foreign film, right? Yes. And and different different cultures have different interpretations of the Santa Claus sure. myth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's very possible this is just the Mexican Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mexican Maybe. Santa Claus lives in a city in the clouds. We don't know. I don't know. Mexico? At Mexico, email or tweet at Red Letter Media. Yeah. Tell us what if your Santa Claus lives on a space station. And works with Merlin. And <laughs> works with Merlin and... and Merlin is in this movie! Yeah. Enslaved children who build your toys, and if he fights the devil on a regular basis. And, and, Not on a regular and has, basis. And has the world's first fleshlight. Santa's got his oh. blowjob machine already. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. Oh. Early fleshlight? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Which is half the size of a wall. Yeah. It's, it's Santa has a very mouth. huge, huge cock. Yeah. <laughs> God! He's constantly giving, giving, oh! giving. Santa's a giver. Oh! A giver. Damn, girl! Yeah, where is Mrs. Claus in this whole no. scenario? Don't need no Merlin. Mrs. Claus. I got... <laughs> Merlin's Merlin. the bottom. <laughs> he's a power bottom. He's a power bottom. He, he gives back. How he, you know what I'm how he, how he, you know. He's very mad. This is magic every time they yeah. get to go. Well, no, because you can tell Merlin kind of walks a little. Yeah, he's, he's got a real <laughs> problem. He probably, he's he's hurt. He's he hurting from the a night potion. before. He probably has a potion for every time Santa comes into his room at night. <laughs> Let's see now. Open up your pack. Are you? It's called his Erase My Memory Potion. <laughs> Hurry, Mr. Merlin, this is no time to play horsey. Santa's in danger. So, Santa has a magical castle in the clouds. Yes. He has children from all races and creeds being the most broad and general stereotypical of their nation, including, I mean, Africans right out of the bush, uh, uh, Spaniards uh, playing a mariachi, and uh, USA kids being cowboys. Yes. And then we meet uh, we meet our children characters, right? And we have we have rich kid whose parents don't love him. We have mean boys that throw rocks mm -hmm. and poor girl mm -hmm. who's poor. Um, so Santa Claus has magical items. He uses them to uh, watch all the little girls and boys in the hear them. And I thought that was my favorite part with all the little like, Power Rangers e gadgets, like in his special yeah. cloud castle. The eye that came out, um, which which looked at Earth. Mm -hmm. He had like an ear satellite yeah. thing, and of course a giant vagina on the wall. He's got he's got wind up toy reindeer. Awesome. And, and and if they're not back at the cloud castle before sunrise, they would turn into dust. And they that will and if Santa doesn't make it back to the cloud city before Christmas is over. He will starve to death on Earth because he can't eat any of our food. He can only eat cloud food. That's magical. Charming production value, lots of little smoke effects and basic. Lots of smoke effects. Everything had dry ice. Yes. The Even glasses had dry ice. Normal the... fountains on Earth had dry ice coming <laughs> out of them. The, the only reason the movie got made is because it was uh, it was produced by the dry ice king of Mexico. We got all this dry ice here. You want to make a Santa Claus movie? <laughs> <laughs> try to, try to get rid of this guy. Merlin. Yeah. Merlin the magician is in the movie. Mm -hmm. yes. For some reason. For some reason. And, and then Santa Claus are roommates. Right. Because he lives in the he lives in the cloud castle mm -hmm. with Santa and all of the children. Mm -hmm. Neither of them have wives, but it's all perfectly platonic. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they live they with the, the hairy chested blacksmith who also <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Who's in uh, one scene yeah. with no shirt. <laughs> Girl. 
he, he pounds the metal all day and uh, Santa Claus comes in and asks him to make him a key for his keyhole. Was that, was that like a metaphor for... I, I think so. For like... I would love to find out if these are all real <laughs> Santa Claus myths or if the filmmakers... This is just... the result of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> it's tequila and dry ice. Yeah. Yeah. Just one long night of margaritas and... Mm -hmm. They wake up and there's like a film reel on their bed. <laughs> <laughs> what did we do last night? Seen oh, oh my god! Did we make a movie? <laughs> oh no! Not again! <laughs> <laughs> Just call it Santa Claus. <laughs> wait, wait, what happened to that? <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> Oh, God, can you imagine how much we're not going to laugh when we talk about Christmas vacations? See <laughs> 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 you on the over. What the hell happened? Why did I get this red makeup on me? What is that? <laughs> what happened? I said, I don't know. Where did all these children go? <laughs> and they're asking. They're asking to just go home. <laughs> imagination and things happening well beyond their budgetary yeah. or, or reasoning or, or anything. Well, Satan is, we haven't even said that like Satan and devils are in this movie. Yeah. Yes. It's a very yeah. Catholic movie. Yeah. Santa Claus is the good guy, the devil is mm -hmm. the bad guy. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. I just flashed back to them like, oh god. <laughs> Are you sure we made a Santa Claus movie? Who, who, who got the Merlin hat? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. We put it together later. Where did this castle come from? <laughs> I, I pictured them on the beach, like in Mexico. They just wake up in the morning. There's all this shit everywhere. <laughs> a couple of the kids just don't wake up. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the sombrero is it moving? <laughs> quick, quick, pack up the giant doll costumes and let's run! <laughs> well, everyone, should people watch this movie, Santa Claus, would they get the same entertainment value out of it that we did? We, we laughed a lot talking about it, but it's, it's not the most entertaining movie I've ever seen. I mean, it's, 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 it's weird and it's, it's interesting, but the entertainment value is kind of, eh. And eh, for, for, yeah, anyone, um, for anyone like us who uh, is into bad movies or B movies, uh, you need something for the Christmas time. For the, you need something for the holiday season, uh, and I think it's a perfect thing. It's, it's something that you can put on in the background, make a joke here or there, and just kind of let sit in the background. I think, it's, I think everyone should watch this. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, uh, I found a lot of entertainment from it, but it was also because we were making jokes about yeah. it and, yeah. you know, and adding more to it. If I were watching this by myself, I would probably be bored. Well, like a lot of bad movies, you need a group of people. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a puzzle. It's fun to put together because it, yeah. it, it's so weird and makes no sense and it's entertaining. Uh, yeah, it's, I, 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 think, uh, I think it's great. <laughs> well, everyone, let's talk about our third film. Um, 
uh, which is called Christmas Vacation 2, Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. Um, well, I, let me just say it's... Uh, it's they, they tried to make money, I think? I, someone... Uh, it, it made its way onto a DVD. Uh, someone made it. Let's talk about Christmas Vacation 1. Oh, that's a great oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, remember, yeah, remember, yeah. Do you remember the lights that would blind everybody? Oh, that was so great! <laughs> that was so great. They had to turn the on the auxiliary kept, nuclear yeah. power. And then when the neighbors kept stuff and then when they were cleaning up, the lights would go back Christmas on. Christmas and, oh. There's a squirrel. There's yeah. a squirrel yeah. in the tree. Uh, How does that contrast with Christmas Vacation 2? Um... Do you, do you remember the, the scene where the dog farted? No. Do you remember remember when 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 he was dumber than the the, the chimpanzee? Well, that, that, I do remember that, Rich. And then do you remember when they kept telling us that he was dumber than the chimpanzee? And then there was the the third time they told us. Do you guys remember when he he unscrewed the faucet handle and the water came out of the wall? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, they had a plumbing problem. Yeah, and then the water came shooting out of the window that, when they left. Was that a joke? No. It, that was their attempt. They, there were many attempts at jokes. Remember when she had the big wrench because, oh, she's got a big wrench. It's a big, it's a big problem, so I got this big wrench. But then her son went and got even a bigger one. Oh, yeah. And then that was the joke. Yeah, that was the joke. Because that the wrenches were really joke. big. Yeah. yeah. She tried to catch the water in a bucket too, and then knocked her down. Pushed her. Back. Pushed her. Back. Yeah. That was not funny. Well, let's give this some context, okay? There um, isn't well, there's some mild context. Uh, uh, Christmas Vacation, uh, two. Uh, Cousin Eddie's Island Adventure. Uh, obviously, aping off the success of Christmas Vacation, which is a classic now. They could have easily have called this Island Vacation. Sure, sure. Cousin Eddie's Island Vacation, but they even do the same font. Yeah. They're, yeah. you know, they just want you to see this and be like, oh, I like that movie. Mm -hmm. Christmas I'm going to buy this. is grafted on because it was the popular one. Yeah. And it, was, it does have the National Lampoon's uh, branding on it, but that is on any crap now. Oh, no, no, no. National Lampoon's is the mark of quality. But the surprising thing is that the writer of this film, uh, his name is Matty Simmons. He was a producer on all the other uh, vacation movies. So there is some connection, plus uh, some of the actors are back, um, the wife, uh, and then the original Audrey from the first Vacation movie comes from, back. Yeah, National yeah. Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah, so there's some like repeats. Fred Willard is in it, Ed Asner, uh, big names like that. Uh, Eric Idle. And then, of course, Eric Idle as a guest cameo. As the falling down guy. No, my, my guess is that Eric Idle said, I will work for one day. You yeah. get me for one day, if you give me a whole bunch of money, I will come and fall down did in your they, movie. Did they have a bunch of money to give anybody, though? Mm. Uh, you know... I guess Ed Asner's in it. Yeah. They shot this... They have Ed Asner money. This was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the movie. They got Ed Asner a money. Couple of, a couple of hundred dollar bills and a case of beer. Right. Some, some bourbon and, and some, their uh, set. Some, his diabetes medicine. <laughs> Were they withholding his diabetes medicine unless he was in the movie? People need to understand how incredibly cheap this movie was to shoot. Everything was shot on sets that the studio has already paid for. Like the the yeah. it's a Warner Brothers lot. Yeah. The Warner Brothers lot. Like so it's all back alley sets that they just have sitting around. So this was an incredibly cheap movie to make. The most the most shameful part, they have they open it with winter scenes and they spray the fake snow everywhere, and then they go to um, the South Pacific Islands somewhere, and they reuse the same street. Uh, and they, and they After clear, they clean up the snow. They clear all the fake snow off and they put a couple uh, palm trees and they're like, yeah! The, the highlight of the movie for us was the fact that a fictional character was from the town we live in. You know where we are? 
I'm from Milwaukee. I don't know much about these islands. Yay. All right. The interesting thing is that that's what the screenwriter thought. What's the farthest thing, the most remote thing from the tropics right. that I could possibly think of? Milwaukee is often the butt of jokes mm -hmm. in movies. Like, where are you from? Milwaukee. It's a joke. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of sad, but it's true. Yeah. Okay, I can summarize the movie for you. Okay. Randy Quaid is stupid. I'm not talking about the character Cousin Eddie. I mean, Randy Quaid is stupid. Oh, don't forget the director and the screenwriter. And the director is stupid, and the screenwriter the is stupid. And the, yeah, and, the... and Ed Asner was just bored, I guess. Oh, but they, none. they faded out because Ed Asner died in that shot. <laughs> I was specific. You were talking about the the Ed Asner scene where it fades out awkwardly. That's a that that sequence is a perfect example of how to fail at comedy because the joke is simple. I built a house and it's going to stand. Set up. Built a house. It's going to stand. So the punchline is the house falls down. Right. Uh, they did a little bit of a subversion there, where where they were. I guess it was supposed to be like a breaking a champagne bottle on a boat. Oh. 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 <laughs> there were like three opportunities where it would have been funny for the house to fall down, and they fucked up every one of them. <laughs> and then when the house does fall down, it's got to be one wide shot. It falls down in one shot. But they do this convoluted thing with different camera angles, different with different camera angles, and it doesn't work. It's not funny. Comedy is all about timing. You have to set up, you have to hit the joke just right. Usually it's right before the audience figures out the punchline. You try to nail the punchline before the audience figures it out. Sure. Yeah. He's jamming uh, luggage in the trunk. That's the joke. <laughs> that was the joke? That was the joke. But nothing like broke or there wasn't anything valuable or... Snot gets to go? Snot lines in the front seat. That's the joke. Oh, the dog farted. There's your fart joke. Because we love, we all love Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation is a movie that works. It's really funny. It's entertaining. Um, Production value aside, we're gonna we're gonna cast aside the cheap green screen effects, sure. the the CGI uh, 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 island, bad sets, the fake snow, everything th that this movie was cheap about. Cast all that aside. Why doesn't it work as a comedy? Clark Griswold. Okay, he's kind of a buffoon, but for the most part, he's he's a relatable everyman. And when when wacky things happen to him, we're we're along for the ride. While, while Cousin Eddie is just a buffoon, and we look at him as a buffoon, and he's so dumb, there's no way that anyone other than a small, retarded child could ever possibly relate to him. Comedy is, all, is about juxtaposition. And so the, the, the classic example is Three Stooges pie in the face, right? The rich guy at the party gets a pie in the face. And that's funny because it's a lowering of stature. It's a lowering of class. Mm -hmm. If uh, the Pope is walking downstairs and trips and falls, that's funny because you don't expect that from a pope. Sure. But let's say um, a poor old woman trips and falls down the stairs, there's no lowering of class, there's no juxtaposition, a bad thing happened to a person in a bad situation. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no comedy. With Clark Griswold, he's a normal guy, has a normal job, seems to do normal things and bad things happen to him. Mm -hmm. Juxtaposition. Cousin Eddie is an idiot. And because of his idiocy, bad things happen to him. The, Cousin Eddie's funny when he's causing dumb things to happen to other people. To normal people, yeah. Christmas Vacation, it's subtle. There's subtle little moments of comedy. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you have those little moments like when they're in bed together and they're talking about the family all being together yeah. for Christmas and he still has the tree sap on his hands from when, you know, so it's like a callback to remember when I, you know, unhooked the tree and it broke all the windows and it was funny. What a fun. Bye, Anniversaries, honey. funerals, holidays, vacations. There's just like these little moments and they don't talk about it and they don't draw attention to it, but it's funny for the audience. In this, it's just, look it, this is supposed to be funny and you're supposed to laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, it farted again. Oh, the dog farted again. Oh, Jesus Christ. The dog's farting and it's stinky. There's a part where he's he unhooks the boat. And then he's just standing on the pier. And then the next scene, I'm like, oh, he's going to jump in and he's going to swim and it's going to be wacky and he's going to grab onto the rope and then they're going to pull him and it's going to yeah. be funny. It'll be like he's water skiing. Right. None of that happened. Yeah. He Next scene, he's just on the boat. Right. My favorite joke in the movie, though, was when Audrey was talking about the boyfriend she just lost and Ed Asner goes, yeah, we don't care. Daniel. Who's Daniel? Oh, never mind. I don't care. <laughs> Yay! Okay. He's the hero attitude. of this movie. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, that was the best joke. <laughs> that was the best. Because that's how I felt as an audience member. Yeah. But see, and that's what I was going to say, is between National Lampoon's Vacation, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and then this pile of shit, Cousin Eddie was more likable as, like, the dopey, odd relative that everybody has, and you know someone who's similar to this or does something like this, um, you know, and he has his little comedic moments. Yeah, I bet you could use a cool one, huh? Now nah, you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That is funny. Super fun. Then, in, in another one of my favorite little Eddie moments, <laughs> is when he's standing there and he's talking to Clark, and, and they're talking about Christmas and jobs and what the kids are doing and all this stuff. And there's this little Ferris wheel, and he touches it, and it all falls apart. That is funny! This was almost like a completely different character who I hate. There was no character. Well, they shouldn't, he shouldn't yeah. be a main character. No. no. no and that's the problem. So it's like, in, in Christmas Vacation, we know in the first five minutes that Chevy Chase is really excited about Family Christmas that he has big plans to spend a lot of money on the pool for his family, right? And so we know right away that he is a family man who wants everything to go right. He has a grounding, so let the comedy happen. What grounding do we have for Cousin Eddie? None. We, we have that he's, he's dumber, dumber than, than a chimp. chimp. He's almost as smart as a chimp. Right? So why is there a Christmas Vacation 2 starring Randy Quaid? Because somebody wanted to make more money off of a beloved movie that Chevy Chase didn't want anything to do with. All right, question answered. Let's go back to why this movie doesn't work. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Well, let's get to the point of the discussion. Sure when we uh, pick the best of the worst, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm going to say it's a unanimous decision for all of us. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence. Well, I, I think everyone agrees that this is yeah. fresh. The, the, yeah. The, uh, yeah, this is with, getting the axe. With, with these two, it's like incompetence versus creativity. I mean, this is just laughably bad. This is cute. There's some cuteness yeah. in here. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence, though I do still think I'm leaning towards elves. Well, can you give us a solid answer? Um, elves. I'll go with elves. But it's okay. not it's not that cut. I'm just saying it's not that cut. Okay. Right. You're saying it's a... It's a, it's it's a, a closer than, yeah, yeah than all that. It's pretty close. Oh. I agree. And, and they were both... I, I agree that it's closer. Uh, they were both... Uh, they were both contenders for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad puppetry, bad effects, the most convoluted writing of... of any movie I've seen in recent history. <laughs> My vote for best of the worst is Santa Claus. Oh. Absolutely. This is this is classic cinema where their imagination was bigger than their budget or means. And I, I really enjoyed how how big it was for how little they did. Uh, Jesse, your pick for best of the worst? <sighs> this is so tough. Um, this is, this is really, really, this might be the hardest one that I've had to make a decision on. Because, again, I agree. Um, this one was just so bad, and I know that the point of the show is for bad movies. I understand. But it also kind of felt like they just kind of slapped the whole Christmas thing in there. To me, mm -hmm. personally. There's no, so like, you're, you're this is happening. You're knocking off points for not sticking to the theme. 
Yeah. <laughs> you gotta but, go with what was. You gotta the, stick that I landing. Know. The most entertaining. But, but I, I really, really enjoyed Santa Claus, and I'm not sure now if I enjoyed it so much because of the creativity or because of how I pictured them putting this movie together. <laughs> um, which is fiction. Which is, which is, I just, yeah, I just, we all just made it up. Yeah. But it's, that's hilarious. Whatever you were entertained I, by, no matter what, right? I think that I laughed more during Santa Claus, so Santa Claus gets my pick oh, of best of the worst. Oh, snap. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to create a problem. Hey, listen, I we can have a tie. That's uh, fine. Yeah, uh, the second ever tie of best of the worst, because I have to go with elves for best of the worst. Um, I, while I thoroughly enjoyed Santa Claus, although there were lots of points where I just wanted it to end, mm -hmm. and it was dry and dull, I, I enjoyed the creativity, the foreign filmness of it. I, I think I had more fun watching elves. Um, That's fair. It, it was a cheap, shitty, horror movie that was so convoluted and crappy that it... And you're gonna elevate it above something that was made with care and love. Yes. Because you're a soulless monster. Uh, perhaps, perhaps, but... I, I think have... for that reason alone, we have to give Elvis the vote. <laughs> but the, although it, it is a straight up tie, mm -hmm. um, I yeah. think, I think, in all fairness, we, this is the best of the worst first, we ask our nonpartisan cameraman Sure. To break the tie. Who's Elves! It? Okay! <laughs> <laughs> Elves is the best of the worst. Fuck you, Bowman! So what are you guys up to? Uh, Christmas vacation to Cousin Eddie's Island Christmas vacation was the most insulting movie I think either of us have seen in quite some time. Like yes, that. that's fair to say. That's accurate. And so we wanted to find the most brutal way to dispose of the movie. Other than shooting it with guns. Whoa! Did that look really cool? Yeah. Well, here it is. A movie deserving of the Shredder. Jack, we do the honors. It gives me great pleasure to do this. Ah! Oh. Even the Shredder doesn't like the movie. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, it's going slowly. Wow. That's more fucked up than Randy Quaid. Oh my god, there it goes! It's almost all the way through. Let me push it through. Alright! We did! So after we shredded the DVD of Christmas Vacation 2, we put it in a Ziploc bag, and now we're preparing to mail it back where it came from, which is Warner Brothers Pictures, and that's care of director Nick Mark. We're also including a letter, and that letter reads, Dear Warner Brothers, why did you do this? Sincerely, best of the worst. 